Chapter One Young Davy. My name is Davy. I was born on August 17, 1787. My father is John Crockett. He was an Irish. He fought in the American Revolution. He was a very courageous man. I want to tell you my story. This is my story. Davy had a difficult childhood. His family was poor. When he was 12 years old, his father said, Davy, our family doesn't have any money. You must go to work as a cattle herder. All right, father, said Davy. I'm happy to help the family. Davy traveled 400 miles on foot. He took cattle from Tennessee to other places. When he finished his work, he was far from home. He was lost. Davy walked 400 miles. When he returned home, he was very tired. Davy gave his father the money he made. His father was happy and said, Ah, oh, thank you, Davy. Now we have some money for the winter months. I can do it again to help the family, Davy answered. The years passed. Davy went to school when he had time. He spent most of his time hunting in the forest. He was the best shooter and hunter in Tennessee. He entered many shooting competitions and won them all. He called his rifle Old Betsy. For years, Davy hunted bears and other wild animals. He was a trapper. Once he hunted 100 bears in six months. It was dangerous to hunt bears. Hut Davy was very courageous and strong. He knew the forest well. The Indians were his good friends. He ran fast and was a strong fighter. He fought with the wild cats of the mountains. Some people said that one day Davy saw a raccoon in a tree. He wanted to shoot it, but the raccoon saw him and said, Wait a minute. Are you Davy Crockett? Davy answered, Yes, I am. The raccoon answered, Then don't shoot. I'll come down from the tree. And the raccoon came down from the tree. Chapter 2 The Creek Ware Everyone liked Davy Crockett. He was always happy, with a big smile. He was honest and always helped others. Davy was a tall man. He wore a coonskin cap, buckskin trousers, and a buckskin jacket. He always carried his long rifle, Old Betsy. In 1806, Davy married Polly Finley. She was a schoolteacher. They had two sons and a daughter, John, Joseph, and Judith. After a few years, the Crockett family moved into the Tennessee Hills. The Tennessee Hills were near hostile Indian country. In 1812, the war between the United States and Britain began. The Mohawk and Creek Indians fought with the British against the Americans. The American general Andrew Jackson organized a small army. He wanted to fight the Creek Indians and the British. Davy fought with this army. He was a scout because he knew the territory well. His work as a scout was very important. Davy traveled across Tennessee, the Mississippi Territory, Florida, and Louisiana with General Jackson's army. The Battle of New Orleans was a big victory for General Jackson and the Americans. The war ended in 1814. The British lost the war. The Indians lost their territories and went away. New American families settled in the Tennessee Hills. At the end of the war, Davy returned home to his family. Unfortunately, his wife Polly died. Life was again difficult for Davy. He worked as a trapper and took care of his three children. After some time, 
Davy met Meg Mackinac. Meg's father was an American trapper. Her mother was a Cherokee Indian. Davy fell in love and married her. They had twins. Davy named the twins George and Washington, in honor of America's first president. There were now five children in the Crockett family. Chapter 3 Davy Enters Politics Davy and his big family wanted to live in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. Davy bought a covered wagon. He and his family put all of their things inside the wagon. Chairs, tables, beds, clothing, and many other things. Four strong horses pulled the big wagon. Davy and his wife sat in the front. The five children were inside the wagon. After traveling in the forests and mountains, they arrived in Lawrenceburg. This was their new home. Davy opened a mill. He was a hard worker. His neighbors liked him. Everybody in Lawrenceburg liked him. He became a representative of the town government. He was very popular. People liked listening to his stories about hunting bears and about the War of 1812. They admired his honesty and courage. Davy was different from other politicians. His speeches were never boring. His message was clear. He spoke to the people in simple language. He dressed like them, too. He always wore his coonskin cap and his buckskin trousers and jacket. One day, at an important meeting, he didn't know what to say. So he looked at the people and said, Today I am like a man trying to drink water from an empty barrel. I'll tell you a funny story and then we can go home. Davy soon became a representative of the government of Tennessee. Now he was in politics. He helped his people in many ways. At first, many politicians laughed at Davy because he never wore a suit. After some time, these politicians admired and respected him. Davy was an honest man. Everyone believed what he said. His buckskin jacket had two big pockets. In his right pocket, Davy had a bottle of whiskey. When he met his friends, he gave them some whiskey. In those days, it was common to give some whiskey to friends. Chapter 4 Congressman Crockett Davy often went to Nashville, the capital of Tennessee. In Nashville, he worked for the Tennessee government. One day, while Davy was working for the Tennessee government, a big flood destroyed his mill. This was terrible. He was very unhappy because he lost a lot of money. When he returned to Lawrenceburg, he started a new type of work. This time he made barrels. He sold these barrels in New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans was about 400 miles away. To go to New Orleans, he traveled on the Mississippi River. He had a big boat to carry the barrels. It was difficult to travel on the Mississippi River. There were many dangers. One day his boat had a bad accident. It began to sink. Davy almost drowned. He lost his boat and his barrels, but he didn't lose his life. In 1827, there was a big election in Tennessee. Davy Crockett became a United States congressman. This was a great honor for him. In the United States Congress, he represented the people of Tennessee. He traveled to Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States. Davy was very happy to be a congressman. He wanted to help his people. There were congressmen who wanted to take land away from the Fox Indians of Tennessee. Davy protected these Indians. 
he fought against dishonest congressmen. The Fox Indians cannot live without their land, Davy shouted. I must defend all the American people of Tennessee, the whites and the Indians. After months of hard work, Davy was not able to help the Fox Indians. The U.S. Congress made a law that took away land from the Indians. Davy was very angry. He hated injustice. In 1835, he left the U.S. Congress. Chapter 5 Texas in 1835, the Crockett family left Tennessee. They put all their things in a big covered wagon and they traveled for many days. They finally arrived in Texas. At that time, Texas belonged to Mexico. At first, the Mexican government was happy with the American settlers. They cultivated the land. Many settlers went to Texas because land was very cheap. With a little money, a settler bought a lot of land. More and more Americans went to Texas. There were about 20,000 American settlers in eastern Texas. There were only 5,000 Mexicans. The Mexican government did not like this. There were too many Americans. Mexico decided to close its borders. The American settlers were very angry. In 1834, the Mexican general Santa Ana became the dictator of Mexico. He was a cruel man. He sent his soldiers to the Mexican border. He did not want American settlers to enter Mexico. By 1834, there were more than 30,000 Americans living in Texas. They wanted Texas to be an independent American state. They did not want to live under a cruel Mexican dictator. Davy and his family now lived in Texas. They were happy in their new home. They wanted the independence of Texas, too. One day, Davy heard that the Mexicans wanted to attack Fort Alamo. The Alamo was a Spanish church and fort near San Antonio in western Texas. There were Texans and American soldiers at Fort Alamo. There were also women and children at the fort. War was in the air. Davy knew he must fight for the independence of Texas. Chapter 6 Fort Alamo. Davy asked other American settlers to go to the Alamo with him. Few men wanted to fight, but this did not stop Davy. He and 15 men decided to go to the Alamo. They were ready to fight the Mexicans. There were 112 men at the Alamo. Colonel William Travis of the U.S. Army was the commander. William Travis was a young colonel. He was only 27 years old. He was a lawyer. He entered the U.S. Army to fight for the independence of Texas. One day, Colonel Jim Bowie and 30 men arrived at the fort. Jim Bowie was a tall, strong man. He was a hunter and trapper. Good evening, Colonel Travis, said Colonel Bowie. I have a message for you from General Sam Houston. Here is the letter. Colonel Travis opened it. He read it aloud. You must destroy the Alamo and come with my army. General Santa Ana will attack the Alamo soon. Can Sam Houston? What? said Colonel Travis. I don't want to destroy the Alamo. I want to defend it. Colonel Bowie said, We cannot defend the Alamo. We must have more men. In February 1836, Davy Crockett and his men arrived at the fort. Colonel Travis was happy to see them. He asked Davy and his men to defend the Alamo. 
We don't have many men, said Colonel Travis. We must ask for more soldiers. I am sending a messenger to General Fannin. He can send us more soldiers. Davy said, My men and I want to defend the Alamo. We are hunters and trappers. Our long rifles can shoot at a great distance. Davy Crockett and Jim Bowie became good friends. Together they repaired the walls of the fort. They cleaned the rifles and the cannons. They were ready for the battle. Chapter 7 The Red Flag One morning a messenger arrived. I have a message from General Fannin. He is very sorry. He cannot send any soldiers. You must leave the Alamo now. General Santa Anna is near. You are all in danger. We don't want to leave the Alamo, said Jim Bowie. We want to fight for the independence of Texas. How many soldiers has General Santa Anna got? He's got about 4,000 soldiers, said the messenger. Colonel Bowie looked at Colonel Travis. We must speak to our men, said Colonel Travis. Yes, said Bowie. We must speak to them. Colonel Travis called his 187 men. He said sadly, General Santa Anna is coming to attack us. He has about 4,000 soldiers and lots of ammunition. We have only 187 men and little ammunition. We have little food and water. Remember, there are women and children in the fort. Then he marked a line on the ground with his sword. Those who want to fight for the independence of Texas cross this line. The others can leave the fort and go home. There was a very long silence. Davy thought about his wife and his five children. Then he thought about the independence of Texas and the American settlers. He thought about a new American state, Texas. All the men crossed the line. These men wanted to defend the Alamo. These men wanted an independent Texas. On February 23rd, 1836, General Santa Anna and his army arrived. He sent a messenger to the Alamo. He wanted the people in the Alamo to leave. The men in the Alamo answered with a cannon shot. They did not want to leave. They did not want to return to the United States. General Santa Anna was furious. He showed a red flag. The red flag meant, no prisoners. He wanted to kill everyone in the fort. On February 24, 1836, General Santa Anna's army attacked the Alamo. The Mexicans had an enormous cannon. It shot a cannonball that damaged a wall of the fort. Davy said, We must destroy that cannon. It can destroy the walls of our fort. That night, Davy and Jim Bowie left the fort. They went to the Mexican camp. Everyone in the camp was sleeping. Davy and Jim silently passed behind the two Mexican guards. They put mud and stones in the enormous cannon. Then they returned to the Alamo. The next morning, the Mexican army used the cannon. It exploded. The Mexicans were very surprised. Their enormous cannon was destroyed. The men in the Alamo killed many Mexican soldiers. The Mexican army attacked many times during the day. But the Texans and the American army defended the Alamo. Chapter 8 The Massacre
The days passed. The battle continued. There was little food and ammunition. The men in the Alamo fought courageously. Nothing stopped them. After 12 days of fighting, General Santa Ana sent all of his army to attack the fort. On March 6th at 5 a.m., the Mexican bugles played the Diguelo. The Diguelo was a war song. It meant death for everyone. The women and children at the fort were tired and afraid. The situation was desperate. The men at the Alamo heard the Diguelo. They understood the message. General Santa Ana's army attacked the fort from all sides. It was a terrible battle. Everyone was shooting, cannonballs were flying, a lot of men were injured, some men were killed. Davy and the other men defended the fort. They sent back the Mexicans twice. The third time, the Mexicans entered the fort. They killed many people, men, women, and children. It was a massacre. Jim Bowie was a great fighter. He was a strong man, and he was never afraid. He fought with his famous Bowie knife. He killed many Mexican soldiers. At the end of the day, three Mexican soldiers killed Jim Bowie. Davy and the other men fought until the end. They killed many enemy soldiers. It was a desperate battle. Four Mexican soldiers killed Davy with a long knife. The tall, courageous trapper fell to the ground. Only two women and two children were alive after the massacre. But General Santa Ana did not kill them. These women and children returned home. The Mexicans burnt the bodies of the dead people. It was a big victory for General Santa Ana. He lost 1,544 men at the Alamo. On April 21st, 1836, General Sam Houston and his army attacked General Santa Ana. General Houston made General Santa Ana prisoner. Santa Ana then signed a treaty. This treaty said that Texas was independent. Everyone remembered Davy Crockett, Jim Bowie, Colonel Travis, and the other men. They died for the independence of Texas. Texas became a state of the United States in 1845. All through his life, Davy Crockett did what he believed was right. With his honesty and determination, he became a national hero. Davy Crockett was the perfect example of the American free spirit. In his life story, Davy wrote, I leave this rule for others when I'm dead. Always be sure you're right. Then go ahead. Once there was a bad and jealous queen, she had a kind and beautiful daughter. Many princes from many countries wanted to marry the princess. The queen said to each prince, Before you marry my daughter, you have to do something for me. And then she gave him an impossible job. When he couldn't do it, she said, Now you will die. And her woodcutter cut off his head. You will never marry, she said to her unhappy daughter. And she laughed. Prince Charles was the son of a poor king in a small country. He heard about the beautiful princess. He said to his father, I want to marry her. Never, cried the king. The queen will kill you. You are my only son. I cannot lose you. There are hundreds of beautiful women in the world. You don't have to marry this one. But the prince was very sad. He couldn't eat. He couldn't sleep. In the end, his father said, Go, then go to the princess. I hope you will do better than the other princess. I hope I will see you again. The prince was very excited, and he danced around his rooms. He ate a lot of food and got strong again. 
Then he began his journey. He had no servants because his father was poor. I'll find servants on the way, he said. After a short time, the prince saw a small mountain. What is that mountain? He thought it wasn't there before. He went nearer. It wasn't a mountain. It was a very fat man on his back asleep. The prince went near him, and the fat man woke up. What are you doing here? Fat man? asked the prince. I was asleep, said fat man. And now I am not asleep, because of you. Why were you asleep? Because I had some food this morning. Now I want my lunch. What did you eat this morning? Asked the prince. Ten chickens and a hundred cakes, said fat man. Will you be my servant? Asked the prince. Give me food, said the fat man, and I will do anything for you. So the fat man followed the prince. A short time later, on their journey, they found another man. His head was down and his left ear was on the ground. He looked up. His left ear was very large. What are you doing, Big Ear? asked the prince. I am listening, said Big Ear. The flowers are opening. The birds are singing in a country over the sea. I can hear them. What can you hear in the house of the beautiful princess? asked the prince. People are crying. Another prince is dead. Will you be my servant? Big Ear. Yes, said Big Ear. I will a short time after that. They saw two long things by the road. What are they? Trees said, fat man. They went nearer. They're not trees, said Big Ear. Their arms, the longest arms in the world, a little later, they saw the man's head. You are a very long person, said the prince. I can be longer than this, said Long Arms. Come with me, Long Arms, said the prince. Be my servant. So Long Arms followed the prince. Next, they saw a man with a hand over one eye. Is there something in your eye? asked the prince. No, said the man. I can see a long way. I can see through things. Buildings, mountains, water. When something is near me, I have to put my hand over one eye. Then I can see it. Come with me. Quick eyes said the prince, and be my servant. And quick eyes followed the prince. They went on their journey, and the sun got very hot. The prince opened his coat. They came to a man by the road. He wore two thick coats and a large hat. They could not see his face. He said, I am cold, cold, and cold. Why are you cold? Cold man? asked the prince. The sun is very hot, and our coats and shirts are open. We are hot. When I open my coat, answered Cold Man, the sun disappears. It snows. Everything dies of cold. Come with me, said the prince, and be my servant. But please don't open your coat. Cold Man went with the prince. Prince Charles and his servants arrived at the city and the prince went to the queen. I want to marry the princess, he said. What do I have to do? The queen answered. You will have to do three things. Do them well. Then you can marry the princess. What is the first thing? asked the prince. I have a beautiful blue jewel. Yesterday. It fell into the river. Bring me the jewel before the sun goes down. The prince went back to his servants. How can we find the jewel? He asked them. Quick eyes took his hand from his eye. I will look for it. He went to the river. There it is over there. I can't see it, said long arms. Then Fat Man opened his mouth and drank the water in the river a short time later. The river was dry, 
Long Arms got the jewel and gave it to the prince. The queen was very angry when she saw the jewel. Then she said, tomorrow I will give this prince a very difficult job. She thought hard. She did not sleep that night. The next morning, the prince woke up early. He went to the queen again. You are hungry after your long journey, she said with a cold smile. I have 30 chickens outside. Eat them before 12 o'clock. I do not want to find one chicken leg. Can I invite a friend? The prince asked. I do not like eating without a friend. You can ask one friend, said the queen. The prince left. He will die this afternoon, she said to her daughter, and she laughed. The prince went back to his friends. Come with me, fat man. He said fat man quickly ate the 30 chickens. Then he ate the queen's other animals, the bread in the kitchens, the fruit on the trees, and the vegetables in the ground. Now what can I eat? asked fat man. There was nothing there. So he went to sleep. At 12 o'clock, the queen called for her lunch. She waited and waited, but no food came. She went to see the cook. Whereas my lunch, she asked. A fat man ate everything in the gardens and everything in the kitchens. There is no food. The queen got angrier and angrier. Then she thought of a plan. Ha ha, she laughed. Now I will catch him. The prince came to her on the third day. Will you eat with me tonight? She asked with a lovely smile. And after that, would you like to sit with the princess for two hours? Yes, answered the prince. I would love that. You will not fall asleep. When you are talking to the princess, asked the queen. Fall asleep, cried the prince. Never. When a person falls asleep with the princess, said the queen, the princess disappears by magic. Then that person dies. The prince put on his most beautiful clothes. He ate with the queen. Their conversation was very cold. Servants brought wonderful food and wonderful drinks. When the prince turned away for a minute, the queen quickly put something into his glass of wine. The prince did not see. He drank the wine. Then the queen took him to the princess. They climbed up many stairs to a high room. The princess sat sadly by the window. The red light of the evening sun lit up her beautiful face. The river below the flowers round the window and her dress were the same color. The prince sat near the princess. They were very happy for a short time, but the princess' eyes suddenly felt heavy. He started to fall asleep. He couldn't hear the princess's words. His eyes shut. He was asleep. Half an hour later, he opened his eyes again. The princess wasn't there. He looked everywhere in the room, but he couldn't find her. He ran to the window and looked out. He saw big air below. He called to him. The princess isn't here. We have to find her in the next hour. Long arms brought the prince down to the ground. Where is the princess? Can you hear her big ear? Big ear put his ear to the ground? Yes, he said. I can hear her. She is calling. She says that she is across the river. She is inside a tree. Her mother's men put her there. Quick eyes looked. Yes he said. I can see her. But how can we get her? cried the prince. I have an idea, said cold man, and he opened his coat. Snow fell. Everything went white. Cold man jumped into the river and the water was ice. They ran across the ice and brought the princess back. Long arms put the prince and princess back through the window into the high room. They sat down and the door opened. The queen came in. She could not speak when she saw the princess. She gave them a cold smile. We are having a very interesting conversation, 
said the prince. We are talking about trees and rivers. Come with me, said the queen. It is night. Your bedroom is ready. Your servants can sleep there. To the prince said good night to the princess, and he and his servants followed the queen. She took them to a big room Ween shut the door. She ran to the cook and said, Make a great fire under their room. After a short time, the room got very hot. The prince went to the door, but he couldn't open it. I can hear a great fire below you, said Big Year. This is wonderful, said Cold Man. I feel really warm for the first time in my life. Open your coat, Cold Man said the prince, when Cold Man opened his coat. The room got colder again. That's better, they said. The queen listened at the door. She heard them. She ran to the cook and said, Make the fire hotter. Cold Man smiled. I am warm again, he said. They are cooking us. Said the other servants. Take off your coat said the prince. The prince took Cold Man's coat away. I am too cold, said Cold Man. Please give me back my coat. Snow fell in the room. The prince could not speak because he was too cold. Fat Man cried. There was ice in his hair. The queen came to the door. She listened nothing. They are dead now. She said she opened the door. The prince and his servants ran out of the room. Let's go and sit by a fire, said the prince. My face and hands are blue with cold. The queen could not win. She knew that now. So she left the country. The princess married the prince, and they lived happily, and the good servants lived with them. The voiceover in this video is given by Prime English Stories. Copying or re-uploading is totally forbidden.